All right. Uh, this is dirty. Okay. Anyways, there we go. Okay, so after fighting with YouTube for like half an hour, uh, I can now apparently upload videos more than 15 minutes long, so we're going to do that. And uh, this engine, I'm kind of going to copy Dave and do a look inside of this engine here, which I recently acquired. And uh, let's get into that and see what we got in there. This is a OS Max 15 CV. Well, CVX because it was a pole starter. So we're going to start by removing the pole starter. This is just kind of a to see if it's going to work video. So I decided, well, I don't really have anything to film today. So let's pull this guy apart a little bit and see. Let's see what happens. I'd also like to put some music on my YouTube videos, but well, the copyright racket nowadays, and even apparently some people with the royalty-free music have trouble, so I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to try and figure that out somehow. Okay, so we're going to remove that. Come on, back plate. <laughs> oh, didn't see that other screw. My bad, derp. Thinking, why the hell is not coming off of there? Okay. Okay, so we have our back plate, we have our <clears throat> starter shaft, and we can see, oh, let's see if I can find a flashlight behind me so we can see in there. Oh right, there's one right behind me, awesome. So we're going to have a look in there, looks fairly clean, I've never run this engine before, so uh, this is going to be a running video of it. Not in an RC car, but on my engine test stand with a propeller on it. I'm going to run this as an airplane engine, or at least attempt to, to see what happens. This, this engine is um, fairly low on compression, so we'll see what happens. Okay, we got the cylinder head off here. The combustion chamber doesn't look too bad. You can see our piston in there, and if we rotate the engine, there's this is an ABC engine, so there it's supposed to have some kind of pinch, but it doesn't. I actually got this engine from a friend of mine. It was uh, in that HPI MT you guys saw in one of my videos. Uh, there should be something right around there, and there's not, so that's not a good sign. And something keeps hanging up inside this engine, too. Oh, there we go. So next, we're going to attempt to remove the sleeve. I think you're going to need to get a zip, uh, zip tie for that. There are a couple of them. <clears throat> should have been a little bit more prepared for this video. And we're back. Okay, so we're going to stick a zip tie, or two, in the cylinder. And we turn, you can see the sleeve will lift up so you can grab onto it. I've never actually even had this engine apart before, so this is the first time. Huh. Looks pretty clean in there so far. Let's get that piston out and have a look. Um, there is a right and a wrong way to put this piston in. Uh, one way you can uh, prevent putting it in the wrong way. I know which way it goes, but for those of you that don't, you can put like a little scratch somewhere on the connecting rod, like a little witness mark for a reference point so you don't put the piston back in the wrong way. Because if you do that, it won't run. Okay. There's the piston out. Let's have a look at that in a second after we get the crankshaft out. Ooh, that's where the block looks pretty nice. This light might be too bright, but... 
Looks like it was well taken care of, just just worn out. I don't have a wrench to get that off, so we're just going to leave the carburetor on. Let's have a look at that crank. Oh, there we go. You can see some fuel residue in there. Yeah, the crankshaft doesn't look great. It doesn't look that bad either. I can't feel any of that. It's just stained from being old, I guess. Oh, it's not too, too bad in there. I got a little bit of brake cleaner here real quick. Second. Sorry about that. Like I said once again, I wasn't really prepared. I just got off the phone with YouTube after a bunch of racket. So we're going to see if we can't make a video that's longer than 15 minutes. Okay, yeah, let's have another look at that crank. So we got a little bit of brake clean. This stuff's cheap. It's only $1.69 a can at my local auto parts store. And we also have some 99% rubbing alcohol. You hear we're going to spray this crank down a little bit and see if that's staining or what it is. Because sometimes the alcohol will remove that, sometimes it won't. I need to get a tripod and a new camera and a new phone. I need a lot of new things. It doesn't look bad at all, really. Just typical signs of a 20-year-old worn-out engine. But I can't feel anything on there. I can't feel any scratches or scoring or there's no high spots or anything. So this crank is still fine. The pin feels good, too. Let's have a look at that piston. Piston doesn't look bad. Just looks like it's worn out, mostly. I'm going to send this away to a friend of mine. And uh, see if he can repinch it. If any of you guys out there know who RB Mods is, he's great. But some uneven wear patterns on this piston a little bit, looks like. Right. Fucking crackheads out there. God, they're stupid. Anyways. So you can kind of see here it's lighter colored. It's darker here, and you can see the same kind of pattern right here. So, not exactly sure what all that's about. Maybe from piston slap or something, I'm not exactly sure. This is 99% rubbing alcohol, by the way. Um, don't use anything less, because it contains water and can rust your parts. But you don't want that. We're going to check here to see if there's any up and down play. Let's see if we hold this steady. I don't feel anything. The side to side play is normal. These OS engines, they don't use a uh, like a wrist pin retainer. They use a, well, you can kind of see them there, like a little Teflon puck. Right there. So they kind of use that. Some of the other engines will use like a C-clip in there, um, or I guess G-clip, it's kind of a G, like capital G-shaped clip that holds the pin in from slapping the sides of the cylinder, so there's that. These OS engines, like I said, they're really nice. They use a bronze bushing at both ends of the connecting rod, which is nice to see. Like some of the other engines I've worked on have only one, or some of the diesels I have have no bushings at all, which is uh, which I thought was kind of strange. But it doesn't feel bad. There's no play at all, so then I guess that motor might be salvageable. Pretty nice and clean in there. I just might need a bit of a wipeout. We're going to be reassembling this engine with uh, some castor oil. 
or after an oil, which I actually have right in front of me, uh, not going to be reassembling with WD-40 like everyone likes to do. WD-40 does not uh, belong on the inside of an, an engine, any engine for that fact. I've seen a couple of people that like to use it. I have no idea why. It's a really poor lubricant. And it evaporates over time and it takes out O-rings and seals and things like that. So it's kind of absolutely pointless. See, Traxxas likes to use after uh, WD-40 as an after an oil, which absolutely makes no freaking sense to me at all why they would even do that, but that's Traxxas for you. Well, it's hardly even dirty in there. And your bearing feels okay. Front's nice and smooth. All right, well, let's uh, get at it, shall we, and reassemble. Today, for reassembly, we're going to be using some uh, clots. Or you can use after on oil. These are what I use to assemble my engines with. Doesn't matter. I'm actually going to save some of that, so I'm going to use castor oil because I have more of it. So, we're going to start the reassembly process, and how I like to do that is take your oil, put a dot or two. You don't need to go crazy. You don't want to flood the engine out with oil, but you want to put a couple of drops in the rear bearing because it's going to see the most stress. And we're going to take our crankshaft here. It'd be a good idea to actually clean the uh, gas passage here, too. Maybe I should do that before. I put it back in the engine because, like I said, I've never actually run this engine myself. It came in that HPI MT that I got from my buddy Dion. Let's see what's in there. Yeah, that's uh, definitely not that good, so... Once you think you've got it clean enough, clean it some more because there's always, you've always missed something or there's, you know, some dirt somewhere you didn't see it or whatever. So, I'm do that again. And like I said, you can use this cheap old brake clean here. It's good stuff. It's, what, $1.69 a can at uh, where I live. There's a place called Lord Co. Auto Parts and here in uh, British Columbia, Canada. I don't know if it's anywhere else. I don't think it is, but they have all sorts of stuff. They even sell toilet paper. They even have their own brand of underwear. Pretty crazy store, and they have really good prices on stuff like brake cleaner and whatnot. So I go and pick up myself a case for $25 and use it on all sorts of stuff. Oh, I'd call that clean enough for now. Right, let's get back at it here. So we're going to put a bit of castor oil on that crankshaft. You don't want to put these engines together dry if you can help it. I see some people like to put their two-stroke dirt bike engines together with absolutely no oil on the piston at all and that just freaking baffles me why they do that. Always some kind of assembly lube is good. Make sure everything turns free, crank feels fine. Next we're gonna go with this uh, strangely worn piston here and see what happens. We're at 13 minutes and 50 five seconds. We're just going to hit that with a little brake clean. Knock any kind of stuff off of it. Any kind of dirt. Because the slightest little bit of dirt or even a piece of hair is enough to stop one of these engines dead in its tracks and keep it from turning over. Or it can even damage the piston and connecting rod really quick. So we're going to put a dot of castor oil on the connecting rod in the connecting rod like that and then with this guy the hole in the piston right there faces the opposite to the exhaust port so that hole is facing over this side so now we're going to draw up it's kind of can be a little bit tricky sometimes oh we got it drop the piston and connecting rod assembly on so now we're going to find the cylinder, give it a quick shot of brake clean and make sure there's no junk on it or in it. 
if that stuff takes off nitro varnish and gunk really nice actually can't remember what that cleaner is that uh, Dave uses if Dave you're watching uh, leave a comment buddy um, but he uses an ultrasonic cleaner for all his stuff I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner I'd like to get one though Okay, let's have a look inside that cylinder for a minute to see if there's any kind of focus. Any kind of damage in there. Always inspect all your parts for a few minutes just to make sure there's no big gouges out of anything. As, uh, some people like to run without air filters that I've seen. That will take out an engine really quick. Uh, everything looks okay in there, no scratching. Put some castor oil in the liner, cylinder sleeve, whatever you want to call it. Like I said, you don't want to put any in anything in dry. And on the outside, I'm going to put a dot of after an oil. This just helps the sleeve going easier. Uh, I don't like to use castor oil on the outside of the sleeve because sometimes when the engine gets really hot, the castor oil will bake and make the sleeve very difficult to get out of the block. So I like to try and avoid that if possible. Okay, we're gonna put the piston down to the bottom. There's a little tab here. It lines up with a notch right at the edge of the sleeve. And push that sleeve in. You have to be careful because you don't want to just start forcing things either, so. Now, there's a tricky part, we have to get the sleeve and the piston to line up a little bit. Don't really recommend using metal tools to do this with, but if you have to, you can just enough just to guide guide the piston back up in there. This one wants to be stubborn today. There we go. Slide the sleeve down. Make sure everything turns over nice and free. Nothing's binding up anywhere. This is going to be my longest video ever. We're at 17 minutes. All right. Next, we're going to put the cylinder head back on. Make sure all four screws are in there. The other thing I like to do is take a little bit of oil and put it on the threads because you don't really want to put steel screws into aluminum dry if you can help it makes the threads last a little bit longer you don't want to put so much oil on there that you actually hydraulic the threads because that can happen so the cylinder head faces this way with the cv power facing forward drop that on We're going to be using a 2.0 or 2.0 millimeter Sportworks wrench, Allen cap screw, or Allen key, whatever, to put it back together with. There is a head gasket. This engine only uses one. I just didn't take it off because they're a pain in the ass, so I just leave it on. They're aluminum, and they often get crushed into the head over time. And I don't have replacement, so I don't want to take it off if necessary. You're going to go run everything down just barely tight and then you're gonna go crisscross pattern like that you don't want to go crazy crazy tight but you want to go tight enough because if you strip one of these out you're kind of screwed right moving on everything feels okay in there I'm gonna put the starter shaft back into the back plate now there's a notch right there. You're going to have to turn that all the way down. Make sure the connecting rod's down. If it'll focus. And then put the two together. Make sure your gasket's... Oops. Make sure your gasket's still there too, eh? So you don't want to run without that because you'll have a big air leak and your engine might not run properly. And click. Lock into place. Put the screws back in. It's missing a screw. Like I said, this was an engine I got basically for free from a friend of mine uh, out in Calgary, Alberta. Or thereabouts, Ground Prairie, I guess. 
There will be a video one of these days soon when I get his 3.3 and bulletproof it with the uh, RB Mods Heavy Duty Connecting Rod and the uh, upgraded bearings and lossy carburetor so you guys can stay tuned for that. All you 3.3 lovers out there. Okay, next our one-way bearing goes on. And our pull starter. Yeah, I know I'm missing a few screws here. This engine, like I said, is also going to be run as not in an airplane, but as an airplane engine, just to see if it runs or not, or it will sustain running, being the fact that the piston and sleeve are very worn out. one-way bearing but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a prop drive I have the nut somewhere else and I'm gonna run a master air screw 9x4 prop on here I'm gonna have to readjust a few things on the carburetor but uh, other than that this is what's gonna happen is I'm gonna run this like an airplane motor I have an exhaust here that a friend of mine gave me unfortunately this hole is stripped and this one's gonna bolt broken off in it so I'm going to try and extract that and maybe clean those threads up or something. And then this is going to go like that. So anyhow, that's the uh, look inside, tear down, and uh, inspection of this OS15 CVX. There will be more to come on this. So uh, right on, guys. Make it easy.